turn that notch or hole punch on the top of your phone into a button. A simple tap can take a screenshot, open the camera, play or pause the music, open any app, and more. All thanks to a free app called Notaguy. If you're using the gesture navigation, you can extend it even further with floating menu. As you know, swiping inwards on either side of the screen lets you go back. But now you can also swipe down on the side to quickly bring down your notification panel or swipe up to toggle the flashlight. Double tap it to switch to the next app or even tap on the left corner to bring down the quick settings panel. If you want to take things even further, you can hop into the app settings and change all those gesture actions and even add more gesture combinations. The possibilities are endless. Want to chat with AI and have it do your homework? Well, ChatGPT for Android is the best option I've seen yet. It's an AI chatbot trained by OpenAI, and it can answer almost any question in a human-like form. From answering basic questions about science to answering complex questions about algorithm analysis. It can write your essays for you or teach you how to talk to girls. Hell, it can even give you some good pickup lines. It's free to use, but the only downside is that it has a few ads here and there. Still, it's fun and scary to see how far AI has come. And those are just three out of the 20 apps that we'll be showing off for the best Android apps of 2023. I'll cut you guys a deal. If you don't download a single app, drop a thumbs down on this video. But if you end up downloading at least one app, you must give it a thumbs up. And if you download two or more, you have to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. Otherwise, how else will I know that I helped you get some proper apps? And by the way, I even have a secret app with all of my beautiful Material U widgets and pixel inspired wallpapers that I created in 2022. It's called How To Personalize, and it's only on my Patreon. Plus, I will be dropping a ton of promo codes for the majority of these apps on my Patreon to get their pro version for free. So definitely get subscribed over there. Anyways, let's move on to the fourth app. Notifya is an app that can detect the opening or closing of a door near you just by using your microphone. Comes in handy if you're paranoid about someone coming into your house while you're using headphones or you wanna make sure your kids don't secretly sneak out. I'll be 100% real with you though, it doesn't always work. It'll sometimes ring without any door being opened, but the majority of the time, it'll get it right. It's also completely free, so give it a shot. Stereo Launcher is probably the most underrated launcher on the Play Store. I mean, it literally has a customizable feed panel to let you follow your favorite YouTubers, Twitter accounts, or websites. A huge refresher from the annoying Google Discover panel. I also love it because of how straightforward it is. The main page includes a few widgets to show you the time, battery life, and music player. You also get your most recently used apps at the bottom. There's a notes section on the rightmost screen. And then swiping up on the main screen brings up all your apps. It's definitely not for everyone, but I'm sure there are a few minimalists out there who will appreciate this. Something for the larger audience is widget share. As the name implies, you can share a home screen widget with any of your friends or loved ones. Then anytime someone changes the picture, whether it be from their gallery or a photo they took on the spot, it'll also update on everyone else's home screen. Gives you a little surprise every few times you unlock your phone. You can also have multiple widgets for different groups of friends or topics. Plus you can even download the app on iOS so that everyone can join in on the fun. If you have that uncle or grandpa that constantly calls you about a phone problem or asks you a question about how to use an app, you can use Screenshot Flow to create them a quick tutorial. It's sort of like a manual that they can follow along. Plus, creating this diagram is super easy. You can just hit the plus icon, allow it to cast on your screen, and then jump into the app that you're helping them out with. It's most likely Facebook. Then, drag the pointer to where you want them to tap, and select the pointer to take the screenshot. It'll show you a preview of the shot, and you can choose to keep it or redo it. After that, head to the next page and do the same thing to create another screenshot. Once you've finished taking screenshots, tap the pointer one last time, hit finish, and it'll stitch together the entire flowchart. From there, you can choose to lower the number of screens in a row to just three to make it easier to see, and save it as a picture or a PDF to easily share it with the family member. No more headaches over the phone. The Pixels have this sweet feature called Now Playing, which basically listens for any music playing around you 
and then displays the artist and song name on the lock screen, just in case you were wondering what song that was. Well, with Ambient Music Mod, you can recreate this, letting you see the song playing on your lock screen. The only string attached is that it is limited to the database of songs downloaded on your phone, so it won't be able to identify every song out there, but the database is growing, and you'll need to activate it with the Shizuku app if you're on Android 12 or higher. If you're anything below Android 12, you'll need Root. Still, your future self will thank you when you don't know a certain song playing at the grocery store or the bar. Nowadays, the quick settings panel has almost every toggle you can think of, but it's still missing a few useful ones. Like the screen timeout. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just change how long you want your screen to stay on, depending on what you're currently doing? From 15 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. Or how about a tile to quickly alter the device's language if you're bilingual? Well, a simple app called Quick Tiles lets you have this. And for a bonus app, you can also download Calentile to quickly see your next calendar event in your Quick Settings panel, no matter where you are. What you're also missing out on is a solid charging station. I promise you that Ugreen's chargers are the best bang for your buck. And I'm not just saying that because I partnered up with them in this video. Take their 65 watt DigiNest Cube Charger, for example. Its cube-like design makes it super compact but it's like having seven chargers in one. A great option if you own a lot of tech and want to juice them up simultaneously. Or they can have other excellent products like a five-in-one USB-C HDMI hub to expand your laptop or other Type-C devices. But my favorite Ugreen product of them all has to be their Nexid 100 watt desktop charger because it can charge a USB-C device at up to 100 watts. That's next level. So if I want to charge a big machine like the MacBook Air with an M2 chip, it could do it in less than 1.5 hours. It also comes with three USB-C ports and one USB-A port to let me charge any of my phones, laptops, or tablets at the same time. It's the perfect way to tidy up any workspace and eliminate all those extra charging bricks. So start the new year off right with Ugreen's amazing desktop chargers linked at the top of the description. Want to navigate your phone a bit quicker? Well, check this out. I can go back by twisting my phone on its right or left side. I can also swing my phone back a bit to bring down the notification panel. Or even bring back the old chop chop feature from Motorola phones to launch the LED flashlight. How am I doing this? With an app called Micro Gesture. You can set multiple gestures with any action you like, including opening your favorite app, bringing up the recents page, and more. Just another cool thing to show off to your iPhone buddies. If you're still one of the many who can't dim their LED flashlight like every Pixel user out there, then download Flash Dim to enable the impossible. By taking advantage of a new hidden feature within Android 13, Flash Dim allows you to change the LED brightness with 45 different levels to choose from. So you can finally lower the light level when you're trying to get around a room where someone is sleeping or not wanting to be disturbed. The only downside is that it only supports phones on Android 13 that have the new camera haul versions like the Pixels or some Galaxy devices. Still, you might as well try to see if it'll work on your phone since it's free. Whenever I switch to an iPhone, one of my biggest troubles is transferring files between my PC or Android phone. It's almost impossible. But I recently started using a free open source app called Arc, which makes sharing files 10 times easier. I just need to have the app installed on both devices and it'll automatically try to detect each other upon opening the app. If it doesn't, I just need to scan the ARC QR code to force the connection. Then I do the obvious, select the device that I'd like to share files with, choose the files and hit accept on the other phone. It's that easy, works on Windows, Mac OS, iPhones and Androids. One of my biggest annoyances I have with the Pixel Launcher is that it still doesn't support icon packs. And sure, with Android 12, Google released themed icons that match the colors of your wallpaper, but it only works with a handful of apps, mostly Google ones. So what I did is I ended up using an app called Shortcut Maker to theme every icon on my home screen. I even used an icon pack called Pix Material U Light Slash Dark to have the icons follow the theme of those Google icons, even when I enable the dark theme. To do this, I just added a one by one shortcut maker widget. I then selected apps and then chose the app I wanted to theme on the home screen. 
Then I selected Icon and picked the icon found within the Pix Material UI Compact. Finally, I hit the check mark, create shortcut, and that's pretty much it. Do that for every app on your home screen and you'll have a fully themed desktop even if your launcher doesn't support icon packs. We've all been there where we're trying to get into an event but forgotten where we saved that darn QR code. Or even worse, can't access it because you have no internet connection. Well, you can save yourself in the future by downloading any code wallet. This lets you store any QR code so that you can quickly access them in the future. The best part is that you don't even need to be connected to the internet to pull them up. Plus, it supports a wide range of barcode formats, from transport tickets, to airplane tickets, to even weird looking barcodes. I'll be using this for when I go to CES this year. If you use Spotify but don't pay for the premium version, you must download Mutify because this will automatically silence your phone's volume whenever a Spotify ad starts playing. Very useful since I'm sure that you know that Spotify loves to run ads every couple of songs and it'll also save you from a heart attack whenever you go from a calm song to a screaming advertisement. Keeping track of things on Android is still really confusing. Like, do you save them on a notes app, have Google Assistant do it for you, or just write them down in a random text field? How about none of that? Because Listy lets you easily track most of your favorite things. From your favorite movies, to your favorite songs, to some of your favorite websites, or even some of your favorite wines or beers. Plus, whenever you do save specific items, it'll include a picture to go along with it. A beautiful and straightforward app. But honestly, I still think it's pretty bare bones. In the future, it would be great if the developer allowed us to add our favorite restaurants, recipes, or just let us create custom categories. Other than that, it's not bad. If you're constantly visiting a website to stay up to date, you should turn it into a web-based app with native alpha meaning that the website will be borderless and full screen and won't have your browser's address bar. Within the app, you type in your URL, maybe give it a custom icon, and then add it to your home screen. When you open it, it'll seem like it's an app. Even better, you can also fiddle around with the website settings in Native Alpha to block all of its ads, remove third-party requests or cookies, stop the JavaScript, and more. Lock screen widgets used to be a thing of the past on Android, and somehow, in an ironic way, a thing of the future for iOS. So as an Android user, you can revolt back and use an app called Lock Screen Widgets to get those same widgets back on your lock screen. I actually found it really useful to quickly see my upcoming calendar events, quickly modify my headphone settings, and properly check the stocks and crypto. I also love that the widgets get stacked on top of each other so I never have to worry about running out of space, and each one is also interactable. This one goes out to any rooted users running the Pixel Launcher. It's a great launcher, but still has some annoying imperfections. Like the fact that you can't remove the at a glance widget, or that it doesn't support any icon packs. So with Pixel Launcher Mod, I can do all of this, and more. It lets me replace the at a glance with another widget. I used one of mine, found only on my Patreon. I can also do the same thing for the Google search bar. And I can even hide the clock in the status bar hide apps in the app drawer, and even customize the background blur of the Recents menu. A pretty sweet mod that even works in the latest Android 13 update. Last but not least, if you're looking for the fastest way to switch between some of your favorite apps, check out Notification Shortcuts. It places all of your most used apps in your notification panel so you can open them easily. Within the Notification Shortcuts, you can even choose which apps to add, and even include shortcuts if you have the Shortcut Maker app. And that concludes the 20 best Android apps for 2023. Again, if you download at least one app, you must give this video a thumbs up. But if you didn't download any, give it a thumbs down. If you downloaded two or more, make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because quality videos like this get released every week and you're not gonna wanna miss out on the next one. Also, if you'd like to purchase a device that was used in this video, like the Pixel 7 Pro, for example, I'll be sure to tag it on the side of this video thanks to the YouTube product tag feature sponsored by YouTube themselves. Either way, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!